the title is true. This is not a joke. It is not because of the bourbon in my hand right now. This is actually happening. But what exactly is happening? Let's find out. What is going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And yes, the news is true. If you read it on Reddit, Twitter, LinkedIn, anywhere that you get your tech news from, it's true. Kubernetes in the API version 1.20 is dropping Docker runtime support. We're going to get into this because there's a lot of confusion going on that people think that Kubernetes is dropping Docker completely. And that's not the case at all. Docker is actually an entire stack. It's not just a runtime. So first, what I want to do is I want to talk about that runtime thing specifically. So I have this diagram here and let's just take a look at this. Now, this is what, you know, kind of makes up Kubernetes. You have your API server, you have your controllers, you have your schedulers. Now, if you look, container runtime, Docker, container runtime Docker in both worker nodes. So what this whole thing means is that's the part that's going to get ripped out. So because of that, this doesn't exactly mean that Docker is just going to completely go away. For example, if you're building Docker images right now with a Docker file, you can still do that. The container runtimes that Kubernetes is going to support, and we are going to talk about that, they're perfectly fine with Docker images. Docker images are perfectly fine. So how you're actually building them today is perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and look at another architecture diagram of what it kind of looks like without Docker. So this is what things look like without the Docker runtime. You still have etcd, the controller manager, the scheduler, API server, all of that, except you see that little line there that it says CRI and it's pointing to the node. Well, that is the container runtime. That's actually going to be what's replacing the Docker container runtime. So as you can see, not a lot of things are going to change too much from a developer perspective. However, you're deploying your applications right now. However, you're building them as Docker images. If you're using Docker files, for example, if you're building up those Docker images, shooting them up to Docker Hub, Docker Hub's still going to be there. Don't worry. If you're shooting them up to any other container registry and then you're deploying them via a Kubernetes manifest, all of that stuff is still going to stay the same. So with that, let's actually look at what container runtimes Kubernetes is going to end up supporting now. So we have this page here, and this hasn't been updated in the Kubernetes documentation. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. So as we can see, we have container D and we have CRIO. Now those are both container runtimes along with Docker right here. Docker, again, Docker is a full stack, but it's uh, it has a container runtime portion of it as well. So if you scroll down here, you're gonna see a few options. You're gonna see a container D. So if you wanna use container D as a CRI runtime, and then you can see that you can install it on Windows, even with PowerShell, CentOS, or RHEL, Ubuntu. If you scroll down here, you're gonna see CRIO. The thing is, to point this out, the reason why Docker, the, the Docker runtime is not going to be supported is because it's not CRI compliant. So I'm really hoping that Docker is going to come back and do something with this, because if not, it's uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be like a final nail in the coffin, so to speak, but it's also not going to look great. <laughs> so these are the container runtimes. And if you want to go to this link right here, this is where you can go to take a look at all of the container runtimes that Kubernetes is going to support, specifically container D and CRIO. Who does this actually affect in this case? Well, as you can see from like a deployment and a development perspective, it doesn't really affect you at all. Now, who it does affect is the cluster admins, the Kubernetes admins that are spinning up clusters, whether you're doing it in Azure or Amazon or GCP, um, or you're doing it raw Kubernetes clusters locally, that's, that's who's going to be affected because you're going to now have to uninstall the Docker container runtime, and you're going to have to install, for example, the CRIO runtime. So because of that, I want to show you real quick on GitHub, really great documentation 
on how you can actually go about doing that. So let's look at this link here. Again, I'm gonna do a little zoom here and we can see that this is running CRIO, the container runtime, on, on a Kubernetes cluster. So right here, right off the bat, we can see switching runtime from Docker to CRIO. And you can scroll down here and you can see things like how to prep Kubelet. So the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to stop Kubelet, you'll have to stop Docker, then you have to ensure that Kubelet service will start with the CRIO service. Scrolling down here, you can see what needs to be in that Etsy slash Kubernetes slash Kubelet environment file. You can scroll down a little bit here. We'll see what parameters are needed for the Kubelet arguments. We'll see the flannel network. You can set up flannel here. Now flannel is just another, it's, it's like a network framework almost. Uh, there are several different ones. There's Weave, there's flannel for Kubernetes. Uh, I would say those are probably like in my opinion, the two most popular. And then of course you can see at the bottom here to start Kubelet with CRIO. Now again, I urge you, even if you're, if you're on the development side, if you're on the infrastructure side, whatever, to go to this link and try it out. Uh, spin up, you know, uh, spin up an AKS cluster in Azure or an EKS cluster in AWS or a GKE cluster in Google Cloud. Um, you know, you can, they're not 100% free, but you can scale those virtual machines down pretty low to one node and, you know, with a small, uh, a small size. So you can really go in there and play around with this because you're going to have to know this. Now, mind you, we are on Kubernetes, the API version 1.19 right now. 1.20 is when this is happening. Uh, I don't remember the specific release date. I'm sure if you Google it, uh, you'll you'll get an roundabout answer. But it's it's coming, and it's pretty darn close. So with that, definitely check this out. Thank you so much for watching, and please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about this. Thank you.